Hey, what's up everyone? I just wanted to make a hopefully quick unscripted video about the animations that I added to my card game and how I went about adding them. But before we get into that, I just wanted to let you guys know that if you have any questions about Unity or programming or networking, please put them in the comment section below and I'll do a separate video answering those questions. So here we have the game open on a build and in the editor. So let's take a look at the animations that I added. So the first thing is drawing. So you have a little drawing animation and as you can see whenever you draw the card it sort of places itself in the proper position. There you go. Every time I'm drawing a card we have this neat little animation. Let's give ourselves some mana and let's summon a card. So pay attention to what's happening on the editor and on the client. So whenever I grab a card and I hover you can see on the editor you see a red square on the client you see a blue square uh, basically showing where you're planning on dropping the card. And then when I summon it, nice little bounce effect that happens. When I hover my mouse over the cards, you can see there's another little pulsating, little bounciness effect that happens. Uh, everything is animated with uh, Dutween, which I'll talk a little bit about. I'll talk a little bit more about that later. Uh, let's summon another creature. So this is a six mana drop. So once again, you can see on the editor where I'm uh, hoping to drop it. And then I play it, and then you have this little summoning animation. If I click on it, now you have the pulsating effect, or pulsing or whatever effect, uh, happening on both screens. And when I hover over it, where I'm, I'm planning on moving, where I'm planning on attacking, you, once again, you can see it on both screens in different colors. So if I just move it over here, there's a little moving animation, moving from one tile to the next. Move it over here, moving animation. You can see after you, you've moved it, it also darkens the color of the... Um, the Pokemon in this case on both screens. So if I just move any creature anywhere, you can see everything is fully animated. Another thing that's animated is the uh, attacks. So if I go over here, let's try to get a, a stronger creature if I can. Okay, four attack, two attack, one attack. It's not looking so good. Okay, let's not. I'm worried I'm going to break the game, so let's not keep searching. Four, four attack damage is fine. Uh, maybe you'll be able to tell the difference. So if I grab a one attack damage minion and I click on my opponent. By the way, when I hover over the my opponent, um, you can see on the editor, you can see that it also pulsates. It, it grows a little bit. So there, maybe you can tell it grows a tiny bit. So again, my opponent can see this information and can see, okay, this guy's trying to target my uh, my creature. So let's hit. A little bit of an effect. There is uh, pop-ups on the screen, and there's a, n a slight knockback, tiny little knockback. But if we do it the four damage, there's a much bigger knockback. So the knockback scales on both screens. Again, both players can see this. The knockback scales with strength. And another thing that we can do is we can just swap positions between our two units like this. And this little swapping animations happens on both screens once again. Now, when you're working with multiplayer animations, you have to keep in mind that there are basically three kinds of animations. There's the first kind of animation is something that happens only on the client. So, for example, when I hover over these creatures, this is only happening on the client. I'm the only one that sees this because I'm the only one that needs to see this. The second kind of animation is something that happens on the client that everyone can see, everyone can experience, but because it's happening on all clients. So, if I summon this creature, this eight mana drop, once again, uh, both players can see it summoning, and it's the exact same animation for both players. There's no difference. On the other hand, the third kind of animation is a trigger that will trigger different animations. So, for example, when I grab a card and I spawn it, the animation itself is basically the same. There's a square on the board, but the color is different. So the coding, how you go about coding that is going to be different because you have to account for the fact that... Um, different players will see different things. Another example of that could be if you're drawing a card on your screen, you see a drawing animation at the bottom, your opponent would see a drawing animation at the top. So the trigger, the the event that triggers the animation would play two separate animations on one screen, it's one animation, on the other screen, it's a different animation. When you're hovering cards in your hand, same thing. I see the hover animation at the bottom, my opponent would see it at the top where their hand is, where their opponent's hand is. So it's important to keep in mind three different kinds of animations. Let's uh, let's go take a look at some of the code to see how all of this works. Now, of course, I'm not going to show you everything that's happening under the hood, but just um, some of the some of the theory behind how this works. So the first thing we're going to take a look at is the card draw animation. So the card draw animation, as I said, is happening only on the client. It's the first kind of animation. It's only happening on the client, and uh, we don't have to tell the other 
clients connected that this animation is happening. What we do need to do though is tell the server that this is happening. So the first thing we do is CMD draw from deck. So of course CMD is a command. So we tell the server before the animation even begins, we tell the server to draw a card for us. So if we go to uh, card manager over here, card manager, and we take a look at uh, CMD draw from deck, right here, this is our command that draws from the deck. Maybe I can make it a little bit bigger for you guys. Uh, hand add deck. So deck zero is the first card in your deck. This is the card at the top of your deck. And we add it at the end of our hand. And then we remove the first card from our deck. So it's pretty simple. Add it to the hand sync list. Remove it from the deck sync list. And that's it. So on the server, this is happening instantly. It's very important that you always, always, always execute your server code before the animation goes through. So if we take a look at our canvas here, and I go to the draw spawn. Let's grab one of our prefabs. I think it's in cards, hand card, and I just drop it into the draw spawn area. Okay, and if I do F, maybe we can see it. There you go. So it's it spawns, initially the card spawns a little bit outside the screen, and then if I were to move the card to the camera spawn position, now you can see it's up here in front of our camera. So basically what happens is it spawns here, then I move it over here to the other game object, and then I move it into our player's hand. So it's a pretty simple animation, once again, done with Dootween. Uh, before I started using Dootween, I was doing just normal animations. So if I take a look at, here, let me just remove this from the screen. If we take a look at our unit here, there we go. So here we have our unit selected. If we take a look at some of the unit animations here, uh, you can see we had a drop effect like this. So obviously this was the summoning effect that we had. So this was the, this was done with uni, uh, Unity animations. Of course it was, you know, there are ways to make this smoother, but this was how it was done. What else did we have? We had a little bit of a float effect, which is a little bit of the pulsing effect that again, now is just done with Dootween. And I think the selected effect is the same thing. Yeah, a little bit of a pulsing effect. So all of this, Originally was done with Unity animations, but I decided to use Dootween because Dootween is just more efficient, it's just better, because you can modify your animation through the code, through scripting, which is how we manage to have, you know, when you do one damage, it knocks back a little bit. If you do four damage, it knocks back a lot more. Through the code, we can manage that effortlessly, but if we were using Unity's animation system, it would be a lot harder to, to make that happen. So let's take a look at another kind of animation, which is the summoning animation, the little bounce effect that happens when you summon a card onto the board. So uh, here if we take a look at our uh, function command cmd play card of course a command is called on the server and then here at the bottom we have network spawn the card that we just created the unit that we just created and then once that's done from the server from the command we call an rpc of course an rpc will be called on every client that's connected to uh, the server so we're going to call an rpc which will do a lot of things locally so not everything that happens from here on out on the rpc is not happening on the server so the server just calls the rpc and then in rpc play card we'll change a couple things like we'll change the the color of the unit so uh over here this one's red this one's blue so we'll change it depending on who summoned the unit and you know who the unit belongs to and uh, we'll also play the animation same as our drawing animation um this is happening on the client so all the server does we're not animating anything on the server the server just tells the client hey it's time to animate now and here is our code unit info, unit animations, unit summon. And of course, this is done through Dootween once again. So if I go into my unit animation code, um, here's the summoning code. We use, we set the vector scale to zero so that it's invisible for like a frame, for just a fraction of a second so that it doesn't clip through the camera when it's being spawned, which I'll show in a couple seconds. Then we offset it, we spawn it a little bit outside like above the uh, the camera, a little bit near the camera, and then we animate it falling to vector zero, which will fall into place on the tile. And then set ease bounce changes what happens when you land. So here, if I just run the code now with set ease bounce, and then I'll change it to something else so you can get a, so you can see how that works. And again, everything is done through Dootween. Let's give ourselves some mana. Let's just drop it. So you'll see it'll disappear for like a frame, which is the scale being set to zero. Then it'll appear. Uh, back just like that uh, if I did ease out I think there's back let's take a look at what the different ones out out back I think there's um in out back let's do that let's tr try that see uh, what that looks like 
So just by changing one line of code, basically you can um, create a completely different animation, which is why I love Dutween so much. Just because you can you can affect so much of the game just through the code. So here, yeah, you can see it's very different animation, a lot. N not nearly as good of an animation so it's not bouncing or anything like that so just ease out bounce creates that nice little um bouncing animation that i liked so of course these animations can only be applied to units that are actually active in the game that are active game objects in the game like these here they're you know physically they exist in the game if you wanted to do like a dying animation um you'd have to do it on a game object that still exists so you'd have to destroy the game object at the end of your animation so in a multiplayer game you might be wondering how do i kill off a unit or kill off a creature at the start of my animation before my animation even goes off without completely you know destroying the animation itself because if you destroy the game object once again the animation will not be able to be played on the game object and basically uh, in a card game we're very lucky because you want pretty much everything to happen on the server and the things that do happen on the server are fairly easy to keep track of so if we take a look at i think it's in you maybe it is in card manager no i think it's in unit manager give me one second unit manager here yep so here we have a grid info which is a sync list of tile infos tile info basically is just information of every single tile uh, so it tells you is there a unit on this tile um how strong the unit is who owns the unit all that good stuff and especially the tile id or the grid id which is the position of that unit so basically this this grid info this small little sync list determines the state of the game at every point so when we do summon a creature when we do summon a unit we update its tile info here the grid info is updated to reflect the position of the unit so the unit's position is if, if we spawn a unit on grid 12, then that's its position. So if we were to leave the game in the middle of the spawning animation before it has time to like drop or finish, um, and when we came back, when we relaunched the game, it would still be in its exact position. If, if we disconnect in the middle of a match and when we come back using grid info, we would be able to repopulate every single tile because we have information about every single tile. Because the grid info is tracking and storing the information of every single tile. So it makes it really easy to recreate the game state at any point in time. So if, we're, if we want to kill a creature, all we have to do is we have to remove it from the grid info. That's it. So by removing it from the grid info, it basically does not exist anymore. So even though visually on your screen you could still see the game object and you can still animate on it and do explosions or whatever you want, on the server, it would not exist anymore because it would not be a part of the grid info. So if someone left in the middle of a destruction animation before the destroy game object command has a chance to execute, uh, when they reconnect, the game object would not be there because it just does, it does not exist on the server anymore. So it's very important to understand that as well, that existing on the server and existing on the client are two very different things. And you can use that to your advantage in multiplayer games in a lot of creative ways, especially when it comes to the, these kinds of animations. Anyways, I hope this video was uh, helpful. I rambled on for a little bit longer than I than I wanted to. And of course, if you guys want to learn more about the third kind of animation, which I did not touch on too much in this video, you can take a look at another video I made called Deceptive Multiplayer Practices or something along those lines, which is basically a video entirely focused on the third kind of animation because it is deceptive. It's a bit of an illusion that we're creating. Remember, if you guys have any questions about Unity networking or mirror or programming or, uh, you know, anything... Any question, really, uh, put, the, put them in the comment section below, and I'll make a video response to those questions a little bit um, a little bit later this year, maybe later in the month, depending on how many questions I get. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time.